That's not cool. That's not good. That is not good. It is not good. It's not. It's not good competitive wise, you know, for being someone that does food, but it is not good moral wise at all. It is literally showing what's happening in that area. Because consecration has to be a part of your life as a Christian. It is mandatory that consecration be a part of your life. You have to live a consecrated life as a Christian, which means that you have to incorporate fasting. If you don't incorporate fasting, you are not going to be successful at being a Christian because you clocked up. So you can't hear like you need to hear. You can't move like you need to move. You're clogged up. And what fasting does is it's fasting detoxifies you. And so if you got all this food, it's a setup. It's a setup. It shows the emotional state as well. It shows the emotional state. The majority of people eat from emotion. They don't eat from need. They eat from emotion. Had to feed it. Had to feed it. And so it shows the emotional state of the seed. It shows the emotional state of the city. And it also shows literally that there is it's clogged. It's clogged. It's clogged. Because there's so much going into it. What's coming up? That troubles me. It troubles me. It literally troubles me. One of the things they said about Aquas Creek, ain't no way to eat. You hear people say that all the time. They ain't no way to eat. They ain't no way to eat. But there's an advantage to that. The advantage that you can have to that is one, families can sit down and eat together because mm -hmm. they ain't know what to eat. So y'all can cook at home and you can eat with your family. That is the great, that's, that's one of the advantages to that. Another advantage to that is, is that it can be some discipline in that city because that city is not clogged. It's not clogged. The vast majority, the biggest issue I see among Christians is they struggle fast. They struggle with it. They literally struggle with it because of the simple fact. I don't mean, you know, gotta be having some hungry you know, you know, all the time. And it's coming from an emotional place, emotional places. You will know what you can tell your discipline by how you conduct yourself with food. Say this, you, you look, you go in the house and you claim there ain't nothing that to eat, but it is. That's the number one sign that it is an undisciplined. It's your undisciplined. Your undisciplined. It is a number one sign that there is undisciplined living. They ain't got nothing, they ain't got nothing to eat, they are. What it is. Because see, what it says is, and I don't know why I'm, this is not my message. What it says is, is that you're saying, what I want ain't here. So what you're literally saying is, is this about, I'm, I'm in control. I haven't disciplined myself to learn to appreciate what I got. Uh oh, I haven't disciplined myself to appreciate what I got. So I'm always going to be, I'm the type of person that's looking elsewhere. And see, you have to watch your appetite because that means you're looking elsewhere. You ain't satisfied. And you'll find yourself when you pick up an attitude of looking elsewhere, that's in all areas of your life. It'll hit you. It'll hit you. It'll hit you in all areas of your life. You'll find yourself looking elsewhere. You won't be satisfied with the house you got. 
You're looking somewhere else. You won't be satisfied with the car you got. You're looking somewhere else. You won't be satisfied with the spouse. You're looking somewhere else. See, that is no discipline. It's no discipline. But when you do as Paul said, when he talked about, he says, listen, in Philippians 4, he says, I have learned that what's so state that I am in, therewith to be content. That's Philippians 4 and 11. He says, I've learned to be content. He said, because I have learned to be a base and I've learned to be a bound. So whatever position you put me in, I've learned to appreciate that position. That's the struggle that we have as Christians. We are unappreciative of the positions that we're in. So we're always looking. Something else. And it's based off of what I want, I want. I want, 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 I want. I got this, but I want that. And I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. You can look, just pay attention to how we're structured with things and how we do. I watch myself with things. Now, you go out here spending that and you calculate it. I calculated in a week time how much I spent on just going out to get something to eat. When in fact, there is some things at my house that could have been suffice. And then I could have used that to pay on one of the cards. So I started looking at myself and seeing that. Because what that means is, is we're literally not as disciplined as we say. We're not as disciplined as we say. As we claim to be, we're not as disciplined. And it's just the truth. And God has got to help us with this stuff. There are so many things. God told me this morning. He said, listen, uh, Delphine. Listen, he said, listen, you, 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 I, I need you. Look, don't even worry about it. Just do what I'm telling you to do. I want you to go back and I want you to just start from the beginning. I said, okay. And just go back and just start from the beginning. Because it's so many things got to be reiterated. So many things have got to be put in place that was missed. And I'm trying to get y'all to a place. He said, oh, you know, on, at the shut-in, there was such powerful words that was released that God said. The Lord said, you remember the three things that the Lord said was happening for this house? He said, what were the three things, y'all? Who, who got it? Provision, healing, and victory were the three things that he declared was happening for this house. That this house was going to be hit with a spring of provision, which means that things are going to be provided for us. He also said healing, not only in the physical areas, but healing in general concerning all places where we need to have healing. And then he said victory. But he told me this morning, he said, you go back. Because there's some things got to be taken care of before I can do it. I want you to go back. Some things have got to be done before I can do it. And so then, I'm like, okay, all right. So check this out. Now, today is Easter. That is, today is Easter. Happy Easter to y'all. Happy Easter to y'all. I seen something the other day. I got to go do some study on, some research on. Uh, it was shown and said that it is proven that it was not Sunday when he came out the tomb. So it's actually done been, been taught wrong, to be honest with y'all. Oh, baby. Yeah, I saved the clip so I can go and check it all out because I want to research and see and all just to see how much we be off with things and all because there's some people, you know, this morning, he got up and all this little kind of stuff. And I do, I am going to talk about resurrection today, but the Lord got a twist on it. The Lord got a twist on it. He has a twist on it. He's good about doing that with me. Good about doing that with me. So I'm going to talk about resurrection today, but the thing that I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about your resurrection. Amen. I ain't going to talk about his. He done done his. He done did his. He is already documented. It's in the books. It's already done. He said, but the problem is that y'all ain't Master Jones. <laughs> you have a master Joe resurrection. <laughs> I said, What? <laughs> you have not mastered your resurrection. <laughs> because if you had mastered your resurrection, 
It'll be a whole lot of things different in your life because of what resurrection means. Ooh, Father God, if y'all will trust God today, I believe I'll do it like he want me to do it. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2. I believe I'll do it like he wants me to do it if y'all would trust God today. If you would just trust God today. Boy, I need to move quick. All right, so this is the title of this today. Your resurrection is the title. Subtopic is, have you gotten up? Your resurrection. Subtopic, have you gotten up? Have you gotten up? Because just maybe you think you up, but you ain't. Just maybe you think you up now. Yeah. Maybe one leg is up. The other one ain't. Your resurrection. Have you gotten up? Ephesians chapter 2. Resurrection. This is what it means. Rising from the dead. Resurrection. The definition of it is rising from the dead. Sounds simple. Sin sounds everything that you've heard about Jesus, but I need to know, has it happened for you? Rising from the dead. Second part B, the revival of something. You've heard it about Jesus, but has it happened for you? You're celebrating Easter about it happening for Jesus but there is no validity of Jesus's until it happens for you. What makes his oh, they think you playing God? What makes his valid is when it happens for you. Lord, have mercy. Ah, uh, that's what makes his valid is when it happens for you. Lord, have mercy. Because he died for who? All right, then. So the validity of his resurrection is when I am resurrected. So he got up, but did you? Oh, Lord. You don't let the man got up by himself? Huh? You, you don't let him got up by himself? You don't let him got up by himself when he did it for you? When his lying down was so you could get up too, but you just gonna let him get up? So then that means his resurrection is in vain. If you don't get up, his resurrection, oh Jesus Christ, is in vain. His resurrection don't mean nothing if you don't get up. It means nothing if you don't get up. Resurrection, rising from the dead, second part, the revival of something. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And you, has he quickened? Quickened is another word for resurrect, revive. And you, look who it said. Look who it said. It says what? You, right? Mm -hmm. Title of the message today is Your, meaning you, right? Your resurrection. Title of the message today. You, your resurrection. And you has he quickened. You has he gotten up. Who were dead in trespasses and you messed up. Daphne yeah. was tore up on the floor. She wasn't worth nothing. One Bible thing, dead in trespasses and in sins, had both of them. She had trespasses because that meant she went on other folks' property doing stuff. And not only did she go on their stuff, messing with stuff, but she messed up in her own life too. So not only did she wrong other folks, she wronged herself. So she was dead in her trespasses and in her sins. That just messed up. But he quickened her. Shut your mouth, Lord. Shut your mouth, God. But he quickened her. She messed up, but he quickens. Somebody ought to tell the thing. 
Wherein in time past you walked according. Check it out now. He gave a definition of how I did this stuff. He says, wherein in time past, therefore, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of. So that's how, that's where you was, therefore. That's where you was, see, but he quickened you. He quickened you. And so what the word quicken means is that he breathed breath into you, but did you get up? You, you, y'all, 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 okay, y'all, you, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. Okay, so what the Lord does is, is the Lord gives restoration to you, but you have to get up. So that's the reason why you got dead Christians. Because they haven't gotten up. You got to get up. It's not, and you call for the blood, but now you got to live according to the blood that's getting up. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh. Oh, boy, didn't I have it. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and, y'all better see what this man said, and of the mind. Lord, have mercy. I took it that, baby. Oh, I went there. I ain't no need to lie. I'm, I'm what we talking about. Cause it was not only in the in the in the flesh, I was in the mind and everything. I'm about to go be with him tonight, baby. Indeed, indeed. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, let me help y'all to understand about that children of wrath, because you'll try it'll, it'll it'll confuse you of why he would say in that text there, children of wrath. Wrath means like anger. Well, how how does that fit in in that text when he's talking about having conversations in time past about the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath? Because check this out right here. The only way that you can do some stuff like that to somebody is you got the have a problem. Let it sit with you. You ain't gonna sleep with that woman, hug unless you got her. Says so that stuff got fulfilled by being the children of wrath. All of that comes from having issues that have not yet been resolved. So that's the reason why I don't trust nobody that's got a problem with me. I'm just being honest. I don't trust nobody that's got a problem with me. You ain't going to do right by me when you got a problem, and I ain't going to do right by you when I got one. It just don't work like that. It don't. You going to be mean. You going to withhold when there is a problem. And he says, all of this comes from the fact that it's children of wrath. Every bit of this comes from that position of not being in right standing. It, was, it produced all of that. Verse 4 says, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has that, go again, has quickened us together with Christ by grace, ye are saved, and has raised us up together. And made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can I tell y'all something? You got to get that in order for you to live that out. That can't be something that you just read. That's got to be a nature that you take on about yourself. You got to understand and know that he really done that for you. And that I really do qualify for that. That Christ really did give me that. You've got to take that on in order for it to happen for you. Too many times I've seen people literally talk about all of the goodness of what, what Christ done and all, but leave themselves out because they look at their trespasses. Mm. 
and they look at their sins and they'll separate themselves from the fact that Christ quickened. Now, it literally, he's talking about the things that they've done, but yet he's steady saying, but he quickened. You messed up, but he quickened. You failed, but he quickened. You didn't do it right, but he quickened. He's steady talking about the fact that he quickened. And so what has to happen is, is the mind has to fashion itself to literally accept the fact that Christ has quickened me. So if they bring it up, what you did in the past, I've been quickened. I've been quickened. I've been quickened. I'm guilty of it, but I've been quickened. I've been quickened. I like to say it like this. He came fast, quickened in a hurry and got me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what that quicken is to me. I know it means to revive, but to me it means that God came in real quick, and I'm glad he did. I'm glad he did. He came quick before I could die in that mess Amen. and got me, and I'm glad he did. It is about the conditioning of the mind and literally where you allow to allow you to see yourself concerning this. I'm trying, listen, I wish I could convey this like, like I want to to tell y'all. People are separated from this. They are literally not bringing themselves into this. And that's why the struggles are coming in with people that literally have deemed themselves as Christians. That have literally asked Christ inside of their life and literally desires to live. And some of them tell them talkers, but they're still outside. They're still outside of it. They're still standing on the outside of it. Because of the simple fact, there are still some hidden matters that they know. Well, you know, what I do, you know, and how I act, and all this kind of stuff. So they won't allow themselves to be brought in. And as long as you don't allow yourself to be brought in, you're not going to experience the power of the resurrection. His resurrection in your life will literally continue to be in vain. God help me, please. It will literally continue to be in vain, which means you will not live out the power of what it possesses. It will literally continue to be in vain. These are the type of Christians that you see are up and down all the time, bipolar, schizophrenic. Those, those, those are those type of Christians right there because they won't allow themselves to live out the fact that I have been quick. I have been resurrected. I'm not there anymore. I don't care what you say. I'm not there anymore. I don't live by that place anymore. Let me read it again. Go to verse 6 again. And has raised, uh, it's two, two letters right there. Raised who? Oh, y'all like y'all scared to say it. He raised us. So that's you and I, right? Mm -hmm. So then why are you only hollering about Jesus getting up? Mm -hmm. uh, why are you only celebrating Jesus getting up? Why you ain't celebrating you getting up? When he got up, I did too. When he got up, I did too. When his tomb was empty, mine was too. And has raised us up together and made, look at that what he says, and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Check this out. Say so he made us to sit there. You know why? He literally, check out the text and how it reads. He made us to sit there. He literally had to put us in a position where he had to say, you can. Go on over there, girl. You can. You ever kept yourself away from something and the people had to tell you, you can come. And you're like, I didn't know. I even... Girl, come on in here. You keeping yourself out because of something you done did. So you thinking that you can't come in and they got to tell you, girl, come on in here. You can come in here and eat. But you keeping yourself out. So it says he made us to sit in these heavenly places because he knew all we would view is the things we done. 
So he made us to sit in heavenly places. But notice the next way he phrases it. He says, in. In Christ Jesus. Which means Jesus carried you into. You better know it. Jesus carried you in now. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Jesus carried you in now. So when Jesus showed up, oh, let me let me show y'all what I'm talking about. When Jesus showed up at the party, he said, I got deaf in with me. You went in with him. 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 That is the reason why he's seated at the right hand of the Father, continually making intercession, because you in with him. You went in with him. They ain't tricking me out, me. You went in with him. Where he go, I go. And he done said that. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be. Also. That's what he said. Y'all better pay attention to the Bible. Stop treating the Bible like it's just some book. He says, where I am, you may be also. So that means if I go in, you go in. So that means if he got up, you got up. Yes, You got up. You ain't down. You got up. He got up, you got up. Verse 7 says, and in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Listen to what he says here. He says, the older you get, the more God should be displayed. Oh, God, help me, please. Lord, help me, please. That's why it's not good to be an old fool. Because the older you get, the more of God should be displayed. Now, you know, these young folk, these young folk, they don't really see no need for it. But those of us that have gotten past this 40 stage and all this kind of stuff, we ought to know better. People 40s, 50s, and 60s years old shouldn't still be out here doing what each other doing. Because as the ages come, you should be displaying the grace. You understand? How are you going to display the grace? By showing them how he done kept you. That's how you display grace. By showing them how good God done been to you. But when they look at a 50-year-old man that's strung out on crack and he running around doing all kinds of stuff, that's not displaying the grace of God to them. But when they see a 50-year-old man, they can literally tell them, son, I've done those things before in life, and life has turned around for me. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and God did this, and God blessed me to come out to be able to do this. He'll listen to him. He'll, he'll respect that conversation. It's not good to be an old fool. It doesn't make God look good. Verse 8 says, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So he said, you're not going to be able to take credit for it. You didn't do it. God did it. You didn't get yourself up. God did. Some folks think they got up this morning by an alarm clock. But it was God that did it. He says, you don't take no credit for anything. God did it. The Lord has all of our lives set from the beginning to the end is what he says. From the beginning to the end. So he literally knows exactly how many minutes their thing going to have. How many seconds their thing's going to have. How many hours their thing's going to have. He already knows this. The only way that you see in the Bible where there was an extended uh, extension of time was when Hezekiah was able to turn his face to the wall and the Lord added time to him. And so then, therefore, I do believe that you can get yourself together and God will add time to you. But guess what? 
during that added time that Hezekiah had, it all had to be spent for the Lord. Every bit of it, that extension had to, had to be spent for the Lord. Case in point, why I tell people that I believe that I passed away at 28. I do. Every bit of it from that point to now is being spent for God. That's the reason why I can't go back. There is no life for their feet in going back. I'll be dead. I'll be dead. Because it's obligated for him. He says, hey, look, girl, the things that you did was set to counsel you out of here. But it is because of my grace. And it is because of the extension that I've given you for you to live for me, for you to serve me. That I've added to your life for you to be able to live. And as long as you do that, you will be around. But if you ever decide you want to kick against that and go contrary to that, because your, your time already expired. It already expired. So I knew that when he told me. When I call myself backsliding in 2003. And he said these words to me. He said, you got 60 days or you'll be dead. 60 days. You'll be dead. I came back. I turned around. I turned around. I came back. 60 days. Two times I've seen God preserve my life. When I backslid in 2003, and then in 2010, when I stepped out into ministry, and I stepped out into ministry and all the people were fighting me, even the church people, the pastors and all, they were fighting against what I was doing in ministry. And the Lord told me, he said, I've got to take you out from out here. He said, because they want you dead. They're tired of hearing your name. They want you dead. So he stopped me. He allowed me to do girl talk. Let it ran for a course of 11 months. Didn't even get into the 12th month to be able to do it. He shut it down in order to protect me because of what the desire was of the folk. Get her out of here. She makes too much impact. No woman. So I've seen God protect my life, which lets me know that I have no other choice but to do this in order for me to keep living. I have no other choice but to do this in order for me to live. That's why I'm serious about this. That's why I don't play with this. It's because I understand that if I ever decide that I don't want to do this, then the children are going to be standing over me crying because there's no more need for me. There's no more need for me. My assignment is to do what I do until the time is up. Until the designated time that he has done what he wants to do through me and has impacted in the way that he wants to through me, then we'll be finished. We'll be finished. How do you know? It's certain things that happen that help me to know that that is what was going on. When you take a young lady at 31 years old and you take her out of the streets, you literally put her in a position as to where she is a single woman, and she's a single woman, and she's literally, she's not a bad looking woman or anything, She and you literally keep her for as many years as God has kept me and has preserved me, it's something to my life. It's something to her. It's something to her. Because of the simple fact, see, I pay attention to the text. I love the Bible. I just can't read it all the time because it'll kill me. It's too powerful for me. So I have to take intervals off of it. 
But it says something in the Bible that clarified to me that God was keeping me. When you look over in the text, it talks about it. Where is it at? Is it First Timothy? Uh, let me see. Stay in Ephesians. I'm gonna, let me show y'all what it says to show y'all how serious this thing can actually be. Uh, I think it's is it First or Second Timothy? Three or four. Um, stay in Ephesians. First or second Timothy. Three or four. One tell them where it talks. Um, I'm on. I'm on to show y'all. Oh, it's second Timothy three. Yeah, let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. I'm gonna prove it to you in the word. Put it to you in the word how I know God is keeping me. And I want to stay kept. Please, Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Let me show y'all something. Now, you've seen this text, but I'm going to show y'all the realness of what this text is. This text, I done heard this text be preached, but this text is preached out of context. I'm going to show you what exactly what this word is saying here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It says, this know also. That in the last days, perilous or troubled times shall come. For men, now it starts to give a description of what's going to be in the, in the perilous times. It says, for men shall be lovers of, the, of their own selves. Catch it now. I need y'all to hear them. Hear every one of them that is saying. It says men are going to be lovers of their own selves. Me, They're not going to care about anybody but themselves. They're going to be selfish. They're going to be covetous, which means that they don't mind stepping in on somebody else's territory and taking over. So, yeah, they'll sleep with your wife. And you know what I'm saying? They, 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 don't, they don't mind doing any of that. And it says bolsters. So they're literally bragging about things and all standing up real you know, real big. And they're proud, which is a, another word for pride, you know. They ain't gonna humble themselves down to say they're sorry. They're, they're, they're too proud. They're too proud. They're too proud to ask for help. You know what I'm saying? They'll need some stuff but won't even say anything. Too proud. And then they're blasphemers, uh, which literally means there that they're going to speak about things that are righteous. They're going to talk against it. That's blasphemy. They, they're, going, they're going to speak against it. They ain't going to have nothing good or positive to say about it. They're going to talk against it. And then they're disobedient to parents. Y'all see all that, don't you? They're disobedient to parents. And parent can't tell them nothing. I know everything. Okay, then I know everything. And it says they're unthankful, man. They ain't giving God thank you for for nothing. They ain't even telling you thank you for nothing. They're just unthankful. And it says unholy. Unholy literally means that there's nothing about them that's set apart. Everything is contaminated. It's contaminated. Verse 3 says, without natural affection. Check it out. That's That, that right there say, that's the reason why they don't care about their children. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That's without natural affection. They don't care about their kids. They pass right by their children and won't even say nothing. Won't support them, won't help them or nothing. Without natural affection. They're truce breakers. Which means they'll be made a promise, but they ain't going to keep it. False accusers. That's for their own benefit right now. I'm going to lie on you and say you did it. When I'm the one that did it. False accusers, all right? They're incontinent. That incontinent right there literally means to have no control over the bladder. The, 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 the systems of the body, there is no control over it. So they're incontinent. That, that means they just a loose cannon, baby. It don't matter to them. They stick it well. They loose. They're fierce. Y'all seen that anger? The anger outburst, they get mad, pow! Before it even be in a conversation with a person about what they hear, they mad about, they done shot them. They're fierce. They're despisers of those that are good. Man, go on, get out of around here, man. You, you, you ain't too open. You know what I'm saying? You, you always, you ain't trying to get into nothing. See, they don't want to hang with you when you won't do what they do. They despise you for the fact that you don't get into trouble that they get in. They don't like you for that, see? 
You understand? They don't like the fact that you don't want an AIS number, but they do. Hey, Amen. Why don't you go ahead and uh, you know, and, and do this right here for me? You know, and see there. No, I don't even ask him. He ain't going to do it. See? Despisers of those that are good. Verse 4 says they're traitors. They're headed. Look at that. They're high-minded. Jesus. They're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Now, y'all all heard this before, right? Y'all have seen and heard this be preached. You heard this before, right? Okay, so check it out. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, he's given indication to say that this is what's on the inside of them, but that ain't what they're going to show you. Y'all, you better hear what I'm saying to you. See, yeah, Jesus Christ, I love you. I thank you for him. Bring him on. Okay, you know. He says, all this is in them. But they ain't necessarily going to show that to you. But it's in now. That's why they got this form of godliness. All right? I ain't finished. I'm going to show you why they got to do it like that. This this form of godliness. It says, but denies the power thereof. See, it doesn't want the power because the power is what brings the change. Amen. So they don't want the power because power is going to say act right. Power is going to say don't do that. Power is going to say tell them folk the truth. So they don't want the power. All right? So y'all with me so far? It says from that source, turn away from, right? Verse 6, going to tell you what this whole, what all these scriptures is referenced to. It says, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. That's who is out. That's who is at. You will mostly see dudes that have these characteristics and they have a good chin. Yeah, I know where he get. How he get off? What? How did how did they get together? See, they lead captive silly women that are laden with sin. The woman that hasn't been resurrected, he a giver. He a giver. And so what God had to do to save my life, he had to resurrect. See, he had to get all of that stuff that laden with sin stuff I was dealing with. All of the stuff that would have given a potential joker the opportunity to get in there. <laughs> he had to get it, see. <laughs> he had to get all of those secrets inside of me, you know. He had to get all of those ill-gotten desires and stuff out of me because if he hadn't got them out of me, I wouldn't have lasted these many years untouched. Mm -hmm. She ain't untouched because they don't want to touch her. They just know they better not try they just know they not try. They just know they not try. I can't do it. There's a core value that's there. See, she's not silly. She's not laden with sin. She's not in there doing things she shouldn't be doing. So then, case in point, if you are living according to wholeness, you can be okay that wholeness will come to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. If you are living according to wholeness, you can be okay that wholeness will come to you. But if you are not living whole and you know your secret, that's what you want to track. You don't have to worry about God sending anything to you that ain't coming from you.
Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> it'll send such a high alert. You will know, uh -huh. this ain't right. Oh, no. Uh -uh, baby. You will know because it's light and darkness. You will know. Listen. I shared something the other night. I'm, 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 I'm going to prove it to y'all why I'm saying what I said. All right. Let me do verse 7 first, and then I'm going to show y'all something in Genesis. Still talking about the women, it says that the woman is ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. She messed up. He can get her when she messed up. He can't get her. If she if she's old. Can't get it. Hmm. All right. So let me see. Um yeah. Let me show y'all how you know. Yeah. Let me get it. I'm going to show you. Yeah, Genesis 1. That's what I want. Let me show you. Genesis chapter 1 and go to verse 11. Genesis 1 and verse 11. I showed this the other night. It says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after what? Yes, Whose seed is where? Yes, Upon the earth, and it was so. So you can only reproduce what's in you. Okay? Mm -hmm. If 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 it's not compatible, it's got to be compatible in order for it to work. Yeah, you don't know if it's not compatible. It's going to be a lot of friction. It's going to be a whole lot of friction if it's not compatible. And so that's how the Lord allows me to know. So you can be at ease, soldier. You can be at ease to my single ladies. Once it presents itself, you can be at ease by going by the qualifications of sin. I'm not a silly woman that's laden with sin. And when you're not a silly woman that's laden with sin, just anybody's not going to approach you. They can't. And that's just the truth. They can't. They can't. They can't. They can think it in their head, but they ain't gonna do it. You know? They, I'm telling you, they can think it in their head, man. There ain't no telling how many of them see my pictures be drooping. 
Well, I'm talking about this phone in the mouth. But they know they better not hit that in box. They gave. Because she is not a silly woman that's laying on the sand. That is what attracts mess. But when you clean your act up, you're not going to draw that. That's not going to come. I give y'all that free. <laughs> y'all that free. All right. So, talking about resurrection. Let me make sure I'm finished in Ephesians before I go to the next place. Um, all right. So, verse 10 says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should do what? Walk in them. Walk in them. He got up. You get up. You get up. You get up and walk this thing out. Get up and walk this thing out. Get up and walk this life out that Christ has died for you to have. Get up and walk this thing out. Get up and walk this life out that Christ done died for you to have. That man's death wasn't in vain. That man died for you to have some things. That man died and cursed poverty. Mm -hmm. You ain't got no business being smitten with poverty. That man died and cursed stress. You ain't got no business being stressed out. That man died and cursed sickness. You ain't got no business being held up with sickness and disease. That man died and cursed every bit of that. So because he, his death cursed every bit of that, get up and walk out what Christ done set for you. Get up and walk out life that Christ has set before you. He talked about what he did for us. It says that he has given us all things that pertain to both life and godliness. So Christ's Christ death signifies not only that you live godly, but it signifies you having life as well. You living as well. To live, in, to live as Christ and die is gain. It is so that you have life as well. It's messed up. It's, 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 it's diverted now. Too many people think that it is just to be godly. But I'm not supposed to have a life. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you not understand God gave you dominance? From the very creation of time, God gave man dominance. He gave him dominion over. Notice the word he used. He gave him dominion over. Catch it, y'all. He gave him dominion over. You got to get it. He gave him dominion over. He gave him dominion over. So that means he put you on top. What you doing? He put you on top. What's going to happen is, is too many things have been diverted. They've been diverted. The Lord is depositing something on the inside of me that's going to deal with women. And I'm a little bit terrified of it because it's going to make a lot of them mad. But it's all right because I ain't scared. I'm just going to sit like my boy got an AR-15. I'm just going to sit with, you know, I'm telling you, you know, I'm, I'm just going to sit. Don't, 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 don't put it up, son. Because I'm telling you, well, what I'm going to have to do, they're going to be very angry about it. Because, see, what the Lord is saying to me is the Lord is about to restore women back to the positions of where we're supposed to be. Because the Lord gave the man dominion. Oh, say it like you mean. Oh, all right. He gave him dominion. It's too many of them now that need chess. They're bad for the old community. You know, that's why they studs. That's why they took test wrong so strong. They walk around here all buffed out and stuff. Put your chest down, son. Lower your shoulders, honey. Yeah, exactly. Lower your shoulders, honey. I'm a woman. Yeah. Literally. Literally, I'm telling you, 
I'm on it. I sent out a clip yesterday just to get feedback on what women were going to say. You should see the different feedback that I got. And I automatically knew what time it was. I didn't get y'all. And I'm on it. I literally know what time it was and what's happening. Now, Vicky nailed it. I'm talking about slaughtered it. Hit it. Bingo on the head. She did. Literally, I'm talking about paying attention to what is happening and what is going on. God gave dominion. And so, what the Lord let me know is a lot of the reason why things cannot be what he has instructed for it to be is because we haven't gotten back on course. Listen, in order for you to be blessed, you got to do it by principle. You got to do it by protocol. Protocol is one, two, three, four, five. Protocol is not six, two, eight, nine. If you see that, you automatically know that's our period. So a lot of the reason we're not seeing things that we should see is because we are out of period. We are out of order. Young lady called me that I sent the clip to yesterday. Called me because she wanted to tell I went ahead and asked her. She said, well, I just want to ask you about some of the, you know, with some of the stuff that I said. Well, what if the man don't take care of responsibility and stuff like he's supposed to. If you supposed to follow him, I said, you knew it when you got him. So father is right here going nowhere. Because you still got to follow order. You don't get blessed until you're following order. God will straighten him up just because you follow the order. You knew it when you got it. So you need to look into what your motive was. Because that's not going to change God. He said what he said. And it's his story. And he's sticking to it. You'll do it when you got it. Well, I didn't know a man supposed to leave and a woman's, you know, supposed to leave her somewhere or what have you. I said, he'll leave you somewhere. Whether it's good or bad, he leave. You just follow it. You signed up for it. You just follow. See, what the problem is, Folk don't want to admit when they done messed up. So maybe I shouldn't have got in there. I did that on my own. That relationship wasn't ordained to God. It was ordained to their feet. But they don't want to admit it. So then, because I don't want to admit that I didn't have no business in that, then I'm finna try to dominate. And I'm finna now get myself out of order. Because I got to drive it now. Because you ain't leading nowhere, and I got to take the lead. Well, you just put yourself in the wrong position. Definitely, you're going to get in trouble. I don't care. You just put yourself in the wrong position. Because that's not your position. If he can't leave what you need him for, you got a flesh problem. Tell the truth about it. You got a flesh problem. You scared you ain't gonna get packed. Because if you don't realize that it's not leading. Then what? Hmm? You don't realize. Listen, let me tell y'all something. God is a God of order. God, I won't think it's a game. God is a God of order. He does not change. 
his order. I don't care how much you kick, pitch a fit. I don't care how many shikongorobosikabandes you do. God does not change his order. You'll find yourself, you and some folk done posse it together in some witchcraft. It's what will end up being done happen. That's what that stuff will end up being. It could rot, but it is I. I ain't getting in it. I already know if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, I'm out of here. And I need to live a little bit more. I want to see my grandchildren. So I'm not getting it. It's a lot of witchcraft stuff going on. You better hear me. It's a lot of this prayer stuff that folk call themselves doing and number witchcraft. That's all it is. When you trying to control somebody with something, that's witchcraft. Jesus said it as simple as this, that will be done. That's all he said. That kingdom come, that will be done, period. Because he said what matters is what the Father say. It ain't no matter about what I say. If I got to get in there and get the Lord do this to him and God do this to him and all this, ah, that's witchcraft. No. That's witchcraft. No. And it's out of order. It's out of order. When you understand the concept of what Eve was designed to do, she was designed to be a help me. He said he didn't say help change. He said help me. The man will bring the change. The man will bring the change. I think, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I don't care. I'm going to do it. But you're going to watch me be a beautiful wife. I'm going to do it. The man will bring about the change. He will bring about the change because he will change her from the position of having to do everything herself till he gets the load. So she changes. She doesn't have to worry about the load anymore. He brought change. He brought change in two ways, in my honest take. He brought about a change and he brought some change. You got that right. I heard it the first time. You got that right. Because <laughs> as a provider, he got to have some change, ain't he? Okay then. Nobody's gonna follow no broke man. What do you got to bring change with? <laughs> what he got to bring change with? If he's an actual man, he's looking for some ways to keep some change. He'll do what he got to do to make sure that he keeps some change. Because he understands he's a provider. He understands he's a provider. He'll look for ways to keep some change. Eve was called to help meet. She wasn't called to help change. Well, God didn't need none of that change. He had already gave Adam precise instructions on what to do. None of that needed to be changed. Because when he said it, it was what he said. He says, over all of this, you have dominion. But there's a couple of trees in the garden I don't want you to touch. Nothing about that had to change. You got access to it all, son. Every bit of it. You are so powerful that I'm going to even allow you to name things. The Bible says he presented it to Adam and Adam gave it a name. And then the Bible says that whatever Adam called it, that's what it was. So the Lord is saying to the man, you got just that much power. So there was nothing that needs to be changed. And he didn't tell Eve. Now, that's Adam called that a dog, but Eve going go over there and change it. I don't want it to be called a dog. It needs to be called a, 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 a giraffe. That ain't what he called her for. 
Go over there and call the dog a dog eat. And just feed it to help your man. He hasn't bought change when you can still be. He hasn't bought change. Because when he brings change, all that air in you. And this is the number one thing that they're trying to holler is, is that's control. Yeah. That's control. He he trying to control. You know, he trying to control. That's the first thing that they're going to holler. Say, so it's done got so bad in society now. Anything that a man suggests to a woman, the first thing they holler is, he trying to control. Can't make the first suggestion to her without automatically, the assumption is, is he's trying to control well, listen here, sister. Uh, listen here. If you are subject to him, that's what it's supposed to be. If it's order. Now, if you don't like it, take it up with the big man. Because the big man established it. The big man created him before he created you, whether you like it or not. See, what the problem is, he don't got too much mouth. You got too much mouth. See? You got too much mouth. In the places where I should have been hitting my mouth, when they didn't hit me, and they should have, would have stopped me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Every time I back talk to Miss Alice, my mama... See, and it would have it would have taught me who was appropriate to talk to and who not to. Because it's a way to do anything. A woman has to be strategic in how she does things. It's not always with our mouth. Sometimes it's with our ways. It's an art to how you handle things and how you get things out of it. A lot of times, if you do it with the mouth, you've got to understand he's already had a mama that done that. So you sound like, that's why they be saying, yeah, not my mama. I tell people, when a man tell you that, you might as well go on that relationship in trouble. That relationship is in trouble and going to go south if you don't catch it. You know why it's going to go south? I'll make it plain. I got to tell women about this to help the world. I'll make it plain why it's going to go south. Don't no man want to sleep with him on. And when you don't, in his mind, don't took the position of his mom, he going to stop looking at you in that passionate way that he was looking at you. His desire is going to start leaving. A little bit. A little bit. His desire is going to start leaving. Because you are taking on a, instead of being and help me to me, you are taking on an authoritative nature. Because, see, my mama had authority. See, my mama was one that could say don't do. And I don't do. My mama was one that could say do. And I do. 
But my wife, on the other hand, is literally supposed to be a support system to me. There is a way that you can get him to not do without you having to sound like his mama. You just got to know your man. You got to know how to communicate with your man. You pay attention. So how do I know my man? I don't know why y'all making me tell all this stuff today, but I'm going to tell it to y'all since you asked me for it. How do I know my man? Well, the scripture says the two shall be as one. So that means he's in you. You should know how he functions if you're in you. Just like he should know how you function. You should know what gets him to turn to the left. And what gets him to turn to the right? You should know that. You should know that. These are things that you should study. Things that you should pay attention to. To know that. So it's not always going to come from a place of scolding with the mouth. That is the reason why in the Bible they told the women to do what? Say it loud. Be quiet. Shut up, woman. That's why they told them that. Because see, you don't know when to use your mouth. And we're not. I'd like to told you he'd rather for you to be back. Shut up. That's why they told him. Hush. Be silent. You don't know when to speak and when not. You know a skilled woman, when a woman is skilled, it's when she know when to hush and when not to. But it takes a skill in order for us to master that. Yeah, I'm talking about all of us. Me too. It takes a skill for us to master that. You know why? Because we are emotional. And we react off of our emotions. And so when our emotions feel a certain way, back. There it goes. Hit them feelings. There we go. There we go. So it takes a skill in order to know. It takes a well-seasoned woman. And if I were you as a woman, to the women in here, I would be working on me with that. To the women that are under my voice, I would be working on me with that. I would take note of myself concerning that. I would. I would take note of it. I would. Because that is one of the most dangerous things that I've seen that have killed relationships is not having any skill in that area. Not being wise in that area. So I showed y'all resurrection and I showed y'all about you being resurrected. Now let me show y'all somebody in the Bible in human form as us that was resurrected. Let's go over to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. I'm going to show y'all somebody that got restored. Because it's very possible to happen. John chapter 21. Show you somebody that got up. John chapter 21. Let's go down to verse uh, 14. Let's go to verse 14. John chapter 21 verse 14. It says, this is now, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So this is the third time it's saying that Jesus done showed himself. He done came and showed himself to the disciples. This is after the resurrection. Verse 15 says, so when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? 
You're about to watch Peter be restored. Because remember, Peter had did what before Jesus died? Excuse me, say He denied, which meant that he took a fall. He took a fall. So before Christ had died, he denied him. But I'm going to show y'all the power of God's love and the power of resurrection. Do you see even after Jesus rose, he still allowed Peter to be among them? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you hear me? I'm trying to see. I'm, that's why I'm trying to show y'all how much the man loves you. So therefore, you can walk in that love and in that resurrection power. That same Peter that has said, I don't know him. And that little girl goes to him and says, Where are you with your people? And Peter starts cussing. Notice John did not come from my way. Roger He thought, you know, that's, we, that's how we are now. You know, we think that if we cuss when we be talking to you, you really going to get the point then, boy. You know what I'm saying? If I just say, no, I ain't got no money, you going to keep asking. But if I tell you, motherfucker, I ain't got no motherfucker money, then you going to really think, you know what, well, she ain't got no money. <laughs> See, that, that's how Peter was. Peter was there, you know, when they first asked him, what you with these people? He said, no. They come back to the little girl. Now, Peter done cussed a child out of <laughs> You know how bad it was. It was bad. Peter done cussed a child out of it. The little girl said, man, when you with Jesus, don't give them no problem. Take your hard head, such and such home. Where your man in there, man? Exactly. I can't stand too grown, too. These children are too grown right here. <laughs> No way, no. So they turn it back over here, no more. <laughs> you know what I said? Hey, hey, no way, smooth turn it back over here, no more. Smooth turn is too grown over there. <laughs> hey, we the customer, right, man. Boy, Amy started about taking a meal by a spook, what a spook kid. Amy said she tried to hustle that boy. That boy was like, wait a minute, this ain't me. Amy said, she said, you owe me five more dollars. <laughs> Hey, he said, it's smart, they smart, it's smart. It's smart. <laughs> you get them to do something, you look real. <laughs> <It's smart. laughs> Baby, mm -hmm. Peter done cussed the child out. And it's that same Peter that's got to be restored. He has to be resurrected. And so we see in verse 15, Jesus is resurrected him. He said, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, he said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? What he asking? The one that's done done the worst. He's asking him, I need you to love me more than the other one. And he said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. And he said unto him, Well, feed my lambs. He's resurrecting Peter right on the spot. He's giving Peter another opportunity right on the spot. He's giving that man another shot. Right now on the shot to come back from a place of failure. To come back from a letdown. I'm still going to use you. Feed my lambs. Verse 16, and he said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time. Now let me give y'all clarification of why he came three times to Peter. It was twice they came and Peter denied him. Your resurrection always has to be greater than your death. Peter denied him twice so he had to resurrect and he had to go three times to get a bullet. So if you serve God at a level of five, say your sin level is five. In order for you to even step into righteous, you got to at least be a six or better. You see? Because if you serve sin at a five and you go in righteous as a four, sin still dominating, ain't eh? So you got to go higher. So Peter had them denied him twice. So in the resurrection, he had to say to him three times. So he says to him the third time, verse 17, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved.
because he sent it unto him the third time. He didn't understand what Jesus was doing. Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. He was restoring Peter. He was resurrecting Peter from a bad place. He was giving Peter life again. He was letting Peter know, regardless of what you did, I love you. And my purpose for you is still at hand. I yet still plan to use you. But this is the thing about it. I'm giving to you breath, but you got to do something with it. Because he said to him, feed my sheep. He didn't say, I'm going to take you to my sheep. I'm going to give you the food. He said, I done gave you the call. Now it's up to you to carry it out. So he would say to a man and a woman that get married, he'll say to the man, I've given you the wife. So now it's up for you to provide for her. He would say to the wife, I've given you the husband. Now it's up for you to carry it out. I've given you the job you asked for. Now it's up to you to get your butt up and go. You see? It's, I've given it to you, but you have to carry it out. The assignment is upon you. So it's up to you to find out what your job consists of. It's up to you to find out what your duty consists of. He says, look, I've given you the blessings. It's just like when he says, I've given, he says, behold, I set before you life and death. Choose life. He says, I've given you both of them. But it's your choice in what you do. And so he's letting Peter know for the third time. Go feed my sheep, boy. Verse 18 says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou was young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whether, whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, Thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee, whither thou wouldest not. Look what he was telling Peter. He said, see, from the other side of things, you used to do it yourself. He said, but now you ain't got to do that no more. See, when you, but before Jesus, when Jesus was on the earth, Jesus was on this earth in human form. He was fully God and fully man, but he was human as the word you could touch him. He was human as to where the Bible says he wept. When they brought Lazarus to him, he cried about Lazarus dying. So he had all the things of humanity as a human on this side of the cross. But on the resurrected side of the cross, there was no harm that could come to him. So what Christ is trying to say to us is, your life will be much better on this other side. You get your butt on over there. That's what he was letting Peter know. He says, look, when you were young and you, 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 you took care of yourself, you handled things yourself, you looked out for yourself. Everything was about what Peter wanted and how Peter wanted things. But you see where that has come to. That has brought you to a place of naught. There has been no productivity in that. But now if you will accept this restoration that I'm, I'm bringing to you, if you will accept this resurrection that I'm bringing to you, the only thing that I want you to do is just feed my sheep, feed my lambs. He called them lambs and then he went to sheep because what he was saying to Peter is, is you're going to get them in a small young stage, but you're going to raise them on up to be sheep. You're going to be with them. This is what you're going to do, boy, for the rest of your days. And if you will do this, it will take care of you. When you are in the will of God, it takes care of you. So this is all you're going to have to do from now on. See, as your own self, you were a fisherman. When Peter, in his own reconnaissance, in his own position, he was a fisherman. He was a fisherman by trade. That's what he did. But when the Lord called him and he accepted the resurrection, the Lord said, now your call is 
feed my sheep, to feed my lambs. That's all you're going to have to do. You work for me, I got you. I got you. I got you. Verse 19, this faith he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, That's the problem right there. Follow me. Follow me. That's our problem. We don't want to follow him. That's our problem. That's, that's the problem that women got. We don't want to follow. I'm going to leave this thing. Hmm. Then Peter turned about seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now that's talking about John. He sees the disciple who Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper. And he said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Now check this out. Now I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to do a whole analogy to show you just how messed up we as people can be. Now, the Lord is talking to Peter, right? And he's restored Peter. Peter is still so messed up. He worried about John. He worried about John. John comes up while Jesus is talking to Peter. Peter sees John coming up and looks at looks and sees John and says to Jesus, Is this one of the ones that betrayed you? Boy, you know Judas already dead. You know Judas was the one. What you doing, Peter? But see, what the issue was, was the fact that John was known as the one that Jesus loved. So Peter's insecurity has started. All y'all know, I'm here in Revelation in the fourth round. He shows me his insecurity. See, that kind of stuff right there will keep you from hearing God like you need to. And it will keep you from walking in Christ like you need to. He literally See John coming. Now, Jesus having a full conversation with him. Done brought him back to a place of restoration. He should have been feeling pretty good, shouldn't he? Because Jesus done took me to a side. This same Jesus that I watched him crucify. This same Jesus that I was literally denied. But he done give me another chance. And instead of me celebrating the fact that he has given me another chance, as soon as I see Sister such and such walk up, here I am. What's she doing over here? Why is she coming? Huh? Boy, I ain't finished with the text yet. I'm going to show y'all. What's she doing over here? Why is she coming? They're completely lost focus. Verse 22. Jesus, with his quick self, he comes back and says to Peter, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it, your business? You see that? Mm -hmm. All you need to focus on exactly is you following me. Why is you worried about that? Why? You'd be surprised how many folk in the church worry about the other folks. You hear me? You'd be surprised how many people in leadership positions that are intimidated by other folk. Least of my worries, and I'm honest with you, and I tell you why. When your sheep know your voice, a stranger, they will not follow. So you don't have to worry about that. When I get lost, all they hear me, hey! You know that song? Peter, showing intimidation by 
by John walking up, because John being the one that Christ loved, it said, that rested on his bosom. So Jesus said, Peter, what business is that of you? Verse 24. This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things. And we know that this testimony is true. And there were also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the word itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. <laughs> so you see Peter literally being restored, but still having the battle with insecurity. Insecurity. Which case in point is why I literally try to teach people that you got to deal with that stuff. You can't act like just because you got a call that that stuff is not there. Yes, it is. The call does not it, it don't hide it. It don't cover it. See, you know, you still going to have to confront it. Amen. You still going to have to deal with it. I don't care how much you have something going on in your life. I don't care how much you I'm trying to think about it. 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 It still don't negate the fact that it's there. And what will end up happening is, this is what I've learned about God. God is prophetic. I don't know if y'all know that about him or not. But God is prophetic. Which means that's why he declared the ending from the beginning is because he's prophetic. He already knows what tomorrow has in store. Dude already know what next year got in store. And so whenever you want to know what's coming, what you do is, is you get in the mind of God. Because God knows the future. And so, therefore, God, because he knows the future, and literally tries to warn us of what the future holds, but because we don't like to deal with stuff, we get caught with our pants down. Because the Lord will be already trying to tell us about this stuff, but we won't listen. You know, we don't want to take heed. God done already trying to warn, trying to tell us about it, but we ain't, we ain't listening. Because God is prophetic. So we miss it. And then this is what some folks will say, they're speaking negative stuff. No, sometimes God is trying to tell you what the enemy is up to. He's trying to warn you what the devil is doing. So therefore, you can take another route. God has shown me things in my dreams in order for me to take another route. Literally. But see, when you, you know, that's the reason why it's so important to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. God don't need to be your last resort. God needs to be your only resort, to be honest. Yeah. Because of the simple fact, he sees tomorrow. Yeah. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows. And if you will get with him, because he knows what tomorrow holds, he can warn you about what tomorrow wants to do. He can tell you literally what tomorrow wants to do so that you can be better prepared or you literally can do as some of them did in the Bible. You can literally change it. Do you know your intercession can change some things? The Lord had a desire to sue Sodom and Gomorrah, get rid of them. That was his desire, to wipe out the whole place. Because he was sick of them and the things that they were doing. One man comes out from among them, catches God's attention. You can look at it in Genesis 18 if you don't believe. He catches God's attention and goes into prayer 
and stop God from killing them folk. But had he not knew what the plan was, how could he be afraid to stop it? Huh? Because you don't know. So if you just keep dodging it, keep running, keep hiding from it, how are you going to know what the plan of it is? Sometimes you have to be strategic enough when you know there is assignment against you. You have to be strategic enough like they were in the Bible when the Lord sent the spies into the land. They get in there and check it out and see what's actually trying to go on. What are they actually trying to do? What is the plan and the plot of the enemy? What does he want to happen? Because if I just set myself at the mercy of the enemy, what? He ain't going to look out for me. So no, I need to know what is his plan? What is he trying to do? <clears throat> How is he trying to do this? Give me insight on what I need to do and how I can get around this to stop this from happening. If the devil told those of us in here that, that are parents, if it was told to us the devil is going to um, knock out one of your children Tuesday at 6 o'clock a.m., you just going to see him? All right, then. All right, then. So you see why it's important to literally know not only the mind of God, but to know the plans of your adversary, too, so that you know how to move strategically and what the desire is. Literally, I was puzzled about a scripture for years that says, agree with thine adversary quickly. Lest I bring you before the judge and bring you to court. I was struggling with that for years. What in the world? Why would I want to agree? That sounds contrary, though. No. It's an adversary. But I need to agree with my adversary. Listen to that, y'all. What is an adversary? It's an enemy. But the scripture is telling me to agree. Huh? I struggled for years with that. Now, God, you know, because God has to give me revelation on stuff in order for me to get to sit with me, you know. What in the world? I agree with that adversary quickly. Let's see, bring you before the judge. So, what in the world are you talking about, God? See, I was looking at it from a position of being not guilty. But the Lord said, I'm talking about regarding things that you are guilty of. Did you hear me? Huh? So they got something. You pay attention to how it works in the court system. You know you're guilty, so they'll tell you to do what? But they'll tell you to do something. Say, it starts with throw. What they say do? Throw yourself on the mercy of the crowd. See, I had the wrong perception. I was thinking that I'm not guilty. Well, I look like the queen with the adversary and I'm not guilty. But the Lord said, that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where you are guilty. So agree with that adversary quickly. Mm -hmm. Agree with that adversary quickly. I said, wait a minute. Yeah, but they got you there, friend. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand it. But I get it now. I get it now. I get it now. 
Y'all, I, I live this. I live this. It's a lot of things I didn't understand in the scriptures. It's crazy to me. You gotta hate your mother and your father. I said, hey, why don't you say that? So I behave if I did that. That don't make no sense to me, guys. Ain't no word is contrary. What are you talking about? Literally had to mature in it to understand what he was saying. There's a lot of the generational ways that you're going to have to count against. You're going to have to be an outcast of you can't, uh, you can't live under that generational curse. So you're literally going to have to hate some things as it pertains to the way your family was raised. All the women in my family are pretty much single women. Single, hardcore women. Well, guess what? On my mama's side, I hate that. On my daddy's side, you know, they love, you know, the men love women, you know. My aunts done had, I think one of my, one of my aunts had three marriages, you know, so see, it's one side without a marriage. It's the other side, plenty of marriages. And I hate it. But I didn't understand it. And he's saying, I got to be first. I've literally got to be first. So a lot of it makes sense to me. Now, that didn't make sense to me. But I'm saying to y'all, Need to serve him from a position of being resurrected. And if you serve him from a position of being resurrected, you will literally see the power of God in your life. You will literally be able to experience the power of God in your life. If you serve him from a position of being resurrected. If you still serve him from your own recompense and the things that you do and how you make things happen. You'll be just like Peter. As soon as something don't go the way you want it to go, deny it. You'll deny it. You will deny it. As soon as something don't go the way you want it to go. I see people do it all the time. Something happen that they don't like. God, why you let that happen? God, why did you do that? God didn't do that. Why did you let that happen, God? Why did you take them away from me? Oh, love. Them folks had an expiration date and you do too. You see? But that's when you're not resurrected. Because if you're, if you're resurrected, you understand you had to die in order to be resurrected. So it'll tell you where you're speaking from. You're either speaking from the position of Simon, which was his biological name, but then Jesus changed his name to Peter, which meant the rock. So you're either going to speak from a position of Simon or you're going to speak from a position of Peter. The effectiveness was in Peter. It was in Peter. So I say to you all today, have you gotten up? If you hadn't got up, then I, sub I submit to you today, you know, from this point forward, start working on your resurrection. Start working on getting up. Getting up. You don't have to stay down. Get up. So, Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for what you spoke to us. I thank you for how you so profoundly have literally illuminated your word and brought forth such revelation today. I thank you, Lord, that these things have been nestled within our hearts. And as David said, that we won't sin against you, Father. I thank you.
And these words will carry us out throughout the rest of our life, but it will increase too. It will also grow and develop more. It was a seed song today that shall produce a harvest, God. Father, I thank you for what it is that you are doing today. Bless the house on today, God. Bless the things, Lord, that will literally come into the house on today. Bless the seeds, Father. Bless it. Bless all the offerings, the things that will literally come into the house for the furtherment of your kingdom today. I thank you, Father. I give you praise and I give you glory and I give you honor, Father. I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice that there will be some great things to happen for them, that there will be some miracles, there will be some signs and some wonders, that there will be some turnarounds that will happen for them, Father. We call untangling favor to hit in areas in the name of Jesus where there are things that have been yoked by the enemy. We call untangling favor to untangle out of those situations and those circumstances and we thank you for illuminating the path, Father, by the light of your word and by the countenance of your face being made shown upon us. And we thank you for it. And we will forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Bless this house. Continue to breathe heavily and mightily upon this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, any questions? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Thank <laughs> you.